Hello, ACL here. In this video, we're going to be introducing the concept of memory editing. Uh, memory editing is an incredibly powerful method of game hacking that allows you to change health, gold, experience, attack, mana, pretty much anything you want, and because of that, it's incredibly useful. Uh, the tool we're going to be using to do this is Cheat Engine. My version is 6.3, but you're probably going to want to grab whatever the most recent version is. Um, the website is just cheatengine.org, but I can put a link in the description for those of you that are incredibly lazy. And what we're going to focus on today, this interface is incredibly overwhelming if you're new. We're just going to be focusing on this little drop-down menu here. Um, uh, there's a lot of information in here, but we care about the byte, 2 bytes, 4 bytes, 8 bytes, float, and double. Now, I'm, I have a little chart here that kind of explains some things about those, but uh, note that 1 byte is just byte, 2 bytes is actually referred to as a short also, so I may call it a short from now on, but that's actually just 2 bytes. Uh, 4 bytes can be referred to as an integer or int and 8 bytes can refer can be referred to as a long integer or long uh, 4 bytes could also be interpreted in a different way known as a float and 8 can be interpreted as a double now to demonstrate some of the properties of these various uh, uh, data types we're going to be kind of messing with Windows Calculator here so if you go in and you type in FF, this is the largest amount you can have in one byte, FF. If you actually notice down here, they have the um, the binary interpretation of whatever is in here. So we have eight ones. There are eight bits in a byte. So this is every single one bit is filled. Now if we take this number and convert it to decimal, we get the value 255. Uh, what this means is that a byte can carry the value from 0 to 255. And if we go into the scientific mode in our calculator, this is actually equal to 2 to the 8th minus 1. And the reason we do the minus 1 is because 0 is a number also. So the range isn't 1 to 256, it's 0 to 255, but there are 256 numbers total. And another thing to note is that there's no negatives here. This is 0 to 255. So if you want negatives, it's actually a different range. We basically split this number down the middle. There's actually a slightly more complicated process that goes down, but it's basically uh, instead of 0 to 2 to the 8th minus 1, we get 2 to the 7th, uh, plus or minus this value, but actually the positive value is 1 less, and that's uh, a product of that's because of something called the twos complement. You can Google that if you're interested, but it's not really worth knowing. Just know that uh, if if the value is signed, if it has a if you want if you want it to be negative, then you're gonna have to split the number into about half, and then you can have the plus or minus values on it. Now the same deal kind of goes for the short. A short is two bytes, so if we put in two bytes of information, FF, FF, you notice down here, eight bits in a byte, we're using 16 bits, and we convert this to decimal, the range becomes zero to about 65,535. Now again, if we wanted the um, signed version of that, and keep in mind, signed is the default when you're programming. You have, you have to jump through some extra hoops to make it unsigned. So pretty much you can assume that every value in the game you're targeting is signed, meaning it's going to have half the range. So this is not going to be a short will almost never have zero to this this value here. It'll probably have half of this. It'll be plus or minus this value. And we can step through this again for integer just to reinforce the concept here. So there's four bytes, so we're going to want to put in enough to fill four bytes of information. One, two, three, four. And you see there it's using all of the uh, 32 bits available. And if we convert this to a decimal value, we get 4.2 billion. And again, if we wanted half of that, it would be the 4.2 billion divided by two. So 232 divided by two, plus or minus this value. 
And that's why you'll actually see in most games your gold will cap off at about this value because integer is the most common value to use for health, gold, um, mana, experience. You can almost guarantee that it's going to be an integer. Uh, some games that are like dungeon crawlers, they tend to have a, like a, a really high gold cap. In which case they would probably use a long because the the highest number for a long is 2 to the 64 divided by 2 if they're using the plus or minus which they probably are and this is I think uh, 922 trillion or quadrillion or God knows what some ungodly number that you're never going to actually get to without hacking so that's when you would use a long if you wanted to go over 2.1 billion now floats are interesting, it's when decimal values appear. So if you see a game where you have a position, an angle, um, let's see what else, Any anything with a decimal value will probably use a float. A double functions like a float, but it has a significantly more precision, but it's often unnecessary to use a double so float will generally be used in place of doubles. In fact, the only two values you'll probably see for a long time are going to be ints and floats. It'll be it's very rare that you'll actually see bytes, shorts, longs or doubles. They do come up on occasion, but no nowhere near as frequently as the other values. So when when we're scanning later on, we're probably going to be sticking to four bytes and float. Oh, time is the other one that's used commonly for float. That's what I was trying to think of. Time, anything time related, you're going to be seeing a lot of floats. So, basically the you don't have to memorize the ranges, you don't have to memorize really too much from here. If there's anything you need to take away, it's how many bytes each of these types take up and Note that an integer, which is 4 bytes, and a float, which is also 4 bytes, are the two most common occurring values that come up. There's also something called a boolean, which is actually only one bit, but modern compilers actually store it using 4 bytes of data anyways, for no apparent reason. So that one's actually just going to come up as an int anyway, so we can kind of neglect the fact that that one exists. But yeah float, int. Memorize those, memorize the bytes that each of these takes, and that'll make life a lot easier when we're scanning later. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. We'll start actually getting into an example in the next one. Alright, thanks for watching, and farewell.